Hey guys, so today we're going to be installing the piggyback ECU. Um, it's not a plug and play, so it's going to have to be manually wired in. We've got the wiring diagram for the piggyback, and then I had to search the um, internet for the diagram for my car. And then once I got that, I just linked them up together, and it's pretty straightforward. You just intercept the wires into the piggyback, and then um, and then they go out of the piggyback back to where they usually go. Once this is all installed, we can open up the program on the computer and um, see what sort of tuning options that we've got. Lucky for you guys, you don't have to sit through hours of wiring and soldering, so um, yeah, I'll just fast forward a lot of this, but um, yeah, try and enjoy it. So the good thing with the piggyback is that you don't have to cut into every wire. There's about, I think there's about 150 uh, wires in the car that go to the ECU, so we only actually have to cut into 25 of them. It's probably not going to take too long, but uh, we'll see how we go. I actually have come across a minor oil leak on the oil return line. There's a gasket that they supply you with, it's that green one there, and it's just it's just crap basically, it's just falling apart. The oil's just seeping through it. So there's just oil just all down there. So I'm gonna take it off, take the gasket off and just seal it with um, some gasket sealant and that should do the trick. But other than that, there's, um, there's no other leaks that we've found. So I'm pretty happy with all that. Piece of shit. Goodbye. This is what we want. Hey guys, so we've got the piggyback wired in. Um, we've just set up the program on the computer and uh, calibrated everything that needs to be done before you start it, so we're going to try and start it and see how it goes. Cheers for AEM for hooking us up on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick update, I have changed the exhaust wrap with this titanium wrap. Also, I've got this new beanie for it, which I think looks a lot better. And I have changed the intake routing. It used to go over here across the front of the engine, but now it goes down through there. I had to cut a bit of the strut wall out, and then it comes down, and the pod filter comes down to, um, into the front bar. It uh, flutters a lot better now that it's less intake piping and also it looks a lot cleaner without it running across the engine bay. Hey guys, so after driving the turbo for a couple of weeks, I've come to the conclusion that it's a little bit too small, the turbo, so it spools up too quickly and it just doesn't have that top of end power that I want to see once I tune it. I got another turbo right here. It's a GD30, like a Garrett replica. It was, um, it was really cheap, only 200 bucks, so all it has is just a bigger rehousing and a bigger blade, so it'll be a bit more laggy, so it'll have a lot more power, like upper end, so um, yeah, I'm just going to unbox it and see what it's like. Hopefully, I can got everything in. <laughs> Dude, it's engraved. <laughs> no way, it's so big, dude. Oh. Front housing is like pretty similar. So the main differences. Front housing is basically the same size, but the blade is a bigger blade. So the flow rating of this is 0.60. AR, whereas my old one was 0.50 AR. It's also got anti-surge in here. So now the main difference is the rear housing. So the old rear housing 
was a 0.57 AR and this one's a 0.82 so the bigger the rear housing means that it takes longer to spool up but once it is spooled up it has a lot more power um, up in the higher rev range. I've taken the bumper and the crash bar off. I'm going to be taking the turbo off and putting the new turbo on. Give me some dose! Give me some dose! <laughs> so that was just some footage of the new turbo. All the skids were uh, done in Mexico. So yeah, we flew the car over to skid there. Um, I was at a car meet last night and they had a dyno there. I didn't plan to, but I actually decided that I wanted to just chuck it on and see what sort of numbers I got. So I put it on and I was running six pound. So six pound, no tune. And I ended up making 232 wheel horsepower, which is just crazy. I reckon I did not expect it to be that much. The plan is now to, when I get it tuned on the dyno, is to tune it to 12 psi because I think that'll be plenty and it should be over 300 wheel horsepower. So yeah, I'll just show you the dyno footage and yeah, enjoy it. Or if you see 10, yep. I'll give you a yell, so I'll watch it. So you want me to back off when you give me a yell? As soon as, you, yeah, as, soon as I yell, back off straight away. Okay, yep. Yeah. Alright, ready? Yep. That's not right then. Yeah. I'll show you here, I'll just get, just readjust a few little things and I'll just 